You are listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxhall, in which I chronicle my life and attempts to become a professional writer by, you know, doing some writing. Daily. Hopefully. Hello, you're listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer. This is another emergency podcast. Um, Here purely because I'm too tired or can't be bothered to do a show today so this is one I recorded in advance um, and I do seem to have a theme now at least for, for a while of these emergency podcasts and I'm going to talk about television that I'm particularly fond of and last week or last time should I say I started talking about comedy shows um, and I briefly discussed things like The Thick of It, Only Fools and Horses, Red Dwarf um, and I've basically gone through a list of what is supposedly the top British comedy and I've picked out a few more that I particularly like. Now apparently according to IMDB the top British comedy show is Faulty Towers. Now I'm not going to slag off Faulty Towers, I don't dislike it but I do think it's a little bit overrated now so It is a very well-written show. It is genuinely funny. It suffers um, because it was recorded in the days where they didn't... Or I don't know if it was a general thing, but this particular show did not have a studio audience. So you've got a canned laughter track. They basically added the laughter afterwards, and it really dates it. It's such a shame because there's some amazing set pieces in there. It's almost like it'd be worth, if they could find a, a clean version without the uh, the laughter on it, if they could then show it to an audience and, and record an actual laughter track. Um, it's got some great writing, it's got some amazing characters, but I just feel, I don't know, I just... It's not about modern sensibilities. I've no problem with the the sort of vaguely uh, racist way that um, some of the characters are treated. Um, when I say I have no problem, I, I understand that it's a product of its time. And I, I don't like the idea of being offended by something that was kind of acceptable at the time I mean there are there are limits to that I don't want to get into discussion about that because this is a bit of a you know, can of worms you know I'm sure there's some some things that I wouldn't like I mean the the, the really um, implicit racist stuff you know uh, Alf Garnet and stuff does leave me a little bit uncomfortable when I see it um, but yeah so there's 40 Towers uh, another show uh, that's high on that list in fact there's a couple of shows Ricky Gervais shows uh, The Office and Extras now off it. I, I like both of them, um, but again, I do feel they are very much of their time. I think, for me, Extras, although it's the less high profile of the show because it didn't have an American remake that was extremely successful and went on for years, but I think Extras is the better show. Um, I love the fact it's got celebrities appearing on it, playing themselves and effectively lampooning themselves. Um, I mean, that the scene with George Michael going into the bushes at um, whichever park it is, um, is just it's hilarious um, and you know what a guy to actually be able to take the mickey out of himself uh, like that hamster teeth wasn't it yeah so um, I think it's very very funny it's got some great characters um, uh, I love extras uh, and, and The Office is good as well I do think it's overshadowed by the American one and I, I've seen every episode of the American one and okay the first episode is basically the same script but then they do very much go off in their own direction and I think um, I think the reason the American show was successful was that it didn't try to copy exactly what happened on the British show once you get past the first few episodes um, but generally I prefer the, the English version to the American version now the last couple of things I'm going to talk about are shows that um, uh, one of them was something I absolutely adored as a kid so you may or may not heard of a series called The Young Ones um, people of my age clearly will have done and it was an anarchic sort of mad sitcom Um, about four students who shared a house together Um, but it was absolutely ludicrous I mean it was it was funny but it was also silly Um, you know some of the situations were were just absolutely ludicrous so there's uh, I'm trying to think of the uh, the storylines of certain episodes and they don't really have storylines it's just it's just ludicrousness like there's one where um, Vivian the punk uh, decides he's pregnant and um, so they're running out of money so they you know, have to sell the house and it's cold and it's wind. So they're literally burning everything. They, you know, they burn, they burn the bits of the house and cupboards and everything just to, um, 
Yeah, and it's absolutely ludicrous, but it's very, very funny. Um, that's not really a story, is it? Um, it it's a, and, and, of course, it launched um, into the public imagination the names Adrian Edmondson, Rick Mayle, and, to a lesser degree, Nigel Planer and Chris Ryan. But, obviously, Edmondson and Mayle continued collaborating with other projects, which I may discuss in the future. But, no, I love the young ones. I love the, the weirdness of it, you know. Some people are put off by the fact there was a there was a band, so they'd for some reason have a pop band in the uh, in the house or you know within the show, and they had some quite big names on there. I think you had Motorhead and Amazulu and uh, Madness. In fact, yeah, the episode where Madness are in it um, doing our house um, whilst there's a riot going on outside the house is absolute genius. So there's some yeah, there's some great stuff in the young ones, but it is. It's very strange, you know. There's, there's, there'll be, a, there'll be a scene where um, they're having an argument next to a plate of uneaten food, and then the camera will zoom in on the uneaten food, and the sausage will have a conversation with the carrot. I mean, it's just, it's just weird and silly. Um, and I've actually already used my six minutes. There's another show on my list that I was going to mention today. Um, of the three I've mentioned, I think my favourite is probably Extras. Well, I have four I've mentioned. I think uh, Extras closely followed by The Young Ones. But anyway, that's me. I will be back with a further emergency podcast on a day where I cannot be asked to do a regular one. Thank you for listening. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxall. Thank you for tuning in to my random ramblings. And if you'd like to know more about me or my projects, visit my link tree at linktr dot ee forward slash Richard Wright, capital R, capital W. Thank you for listening.